So we understand the four conditions which are important for a deadlock. It means that if all of these four conditions they are held at the same time then it will create a deadlock. So deadlock with mutex. Mutex locks are mutual exclusion locks which means that if any process it gets access to a lock okay then no other process can use that lock and the process will use that lock to enter some critical section it will finish its task and then when it comes out of the critical section into the exit section then it will release the lock that is the basic concept of mutex locks that we studied in chapter 5 synchronization now we studied there you can repeat from chapter 5 or you can see this box in this chapter on page 317 318 of the book about possible deadlock condition when we use mutex locks what is the possibility that we get deadlock condition for example i have two processes process a and process b and there are two resources resource 1 and resource 2 so if process a wants to access resource 1 and then resource 2 and process B it wants to access resource 2 and then access resource 1 there is a chance of deadlock how for example if process A it accesses uh, it locks resource 1 and at the same time process B it locks resource 2 now if process A wants to get access to resource 2 it cannot because it is being locked by process B and similarly if process B it wants to access resource 1 it cannot access resource 1 because it is being locked by process A so these two processes they are waiting for one another and no one can proceed they will wait forever because they are waiting for each other so this is the result this will result in a deadlock because of the mutex locks so there is a concept which we call as resource allocation graph okay in which we have set of vertices two types of vertices one denotes the process and the other type denotes the resources of the system and between the process and resources we have two types of edges these edges they are known as the request edge or the assignment edge the request edge is from a process to a resource and it means that this process needs a resource and the assignment as is from resource to a process and it means that the resource is being utilized by the process or being locked by the process so the process is now responsible for the resource and this resource instance cannot be used by any other process so in the graph we have these concepts a process is denoted by a circle then an instance is denoted by a square here we have one resource with four instances <coughs> similarly an arrow for a, from a process to a resource means that the process is requesting the resource and an arrow from a resource instance to a process means that the process is holding the resource and this resource cannot be used by another process this will result in an example graph like this we have three processes and four resources each resource has one or more instances resource 1 and resource 3 have one instance each and resource 2 and resource four, uh, 4 have uh, resource 2 has two instances and resource 4 has three instances so process p1 has an error for r1 which means it wants to access r1 this is a request edge and process p2 has a an arrow from R1 to itself it means that process P2 is holding R1 similarly for the other arrows from process P2 or process P3 etc now why how can we use this graph uh, resource allocation graph for detecting deadlock now here is an example in which you have a cycle in this graph the cycle is in terms of arrows from process to process okay so what you see here is uh, let's say we start with process p1 we can see that there is an arrow which goes and we continue with this arrow and at the end we come back to process p1 this is a cycle now we say that there is 
a deadlock in this graph, okay, because there is a cycle. But then we consider another graph. Here we also have a cycle, like we start from P1, okay, going to P3, then R2, and again to P1. This is also a cycle, but there is not a deadlock, okay. And the reason is that if uh, if we compare these two, okay, the one here, there is a cycle and a deadlock, and this one has a cycle but no deadlock. The difference between these two is that here, in this example, we can see that R1 and R3, they have only one instance, okay? And in the second example, R1 and R2, they have more than one instances. So, one rule is that if there is a cycle, there can be a deadlock, but there will be a deadlock if there is only one type of uh, one instance of resource. For example, if R1 has only one instance or R2 has only one instance, then there will be a deadlock. Otherwise, if there are more than one instance of a resource, then there will be uh, there may be a possibility of deadlock, but not necessarily. <coughs> so how do we handle deadlocks we have different methods okay and our objective is that we ensure that the system will never enter a deadlock state this is possible if we have the mechanism for deadlock prevention or for deadlock avoidance similarly another possibility another method is that we let the system enter a deadlock state and then we recover from it and the third one is uh, the method for handling deadlock is to we ignore the problem and we pretend at all that deadlocks may never occur in the system Okay, so most of the operating systems like Unix and Windows They use the third option which means that they just ignore the deadlock problem and they say that the deadlock, the deadlock will never occur So if there is any deadlock in such systems, it will definitely be a problem Okay, so the user has to solve that problem <coughs> Now about the first one, deadlock prevention, if we see, then deadlock prevention means that you do not allow the deadlock to happen, you do some, you take some steps so that the deadlock will not happen. And how is it possible? Uh, I discussed in the beginning that we have the four conditions for deadlock, mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption and circular wait. Now, if these four conditions, they occur at the same time, there will be a deadlock. What we can do is that we can prevent a deadlock if any one of these conditions, they can be relaxed. Which means that we make sure that these four, they do not hold at the same time. Maybe two conditions, they are true, three conditions, they are true but we try our best so that these four are not true at the same time the first condition mutual exclusion by its definition it means that a resource will be accessed by only one process at a time now we can constrain this condition by allowing more than one processes and it is possible for those resources which are shareable so let's say there is a read only file so we can allow more than one processes to access the read on the file at the same time. In this way, we can relax the condition and avoid a deadlock. Similarly, hold and wait, if you remember, it was about the condition when a process needs more than one resources, it accesses one resource, it holds the resource, and then it is waiting for another resource. This is hold and wait. If hold and wait is true, it can result a deadlock. So what we can do is to not allow the hold and wait. For example, maybe we see that we can allow only accessing a process if all of its resources are available. Not just one, let's say it needs three resources. So we will allow to access these three resources at the same time rather than allowing them one by one. So this process can result in low resource utilization Okay, because uh, not resources, not all of the resources will be available, so the process has to wait for them, but at least there will be no deadlock. Similarly, this process can result in starvation because it has to wait for a longer time 
to get all the resources to be freed at the same time. The two other conditions, no preemption and circular weight, they can also be constrained, which means that we can put some conditions so that they do not occur. No preemption is the condition when a process get holds of, uh, gets hold of a resource and it does not leave the resource before finishing its, its task. So what we can do, we can relax this condition, we can preempt the resource from a process. So if we do this, we can have a prevent deadlock. And finally, circular weight. When one process is waiting for another, second process, second is waiting for the third, and the third is waiting for the first. Okay, so this will create a circular weight. We can avoid this circular weight if we order these processes in some priority or in some ordering number to access a resource type. By imposing the order, we can avoid circular weight. So these were the things about deadlock prevention. You uh, do some, you take some measures so that the deadlock may not happen. The second mechanism is about deadlock avoidance. It means that the system takes some measure in advance before allocating any resources to a process. The system takes note of some information and then making use of that information, it does not allow the deadlock to happen. What can be the case? So one simple case is that for each process, we say that the process must declare the maximum number of resources of each type that it may need. For example, before starting a process, the, uh, the, before uh, starting request for resources, the process must declare that it's, it needs, let's say, one CD drive, it needs a keyboard input, it needs, for example, USB, it needs uh, access to hard disk, etc. All those things, they are declared by the process in advance. So the deadlock avoidance algorithm, it will check the resource allocation state to see if there is any circular weight or not. So it will try to avoid uh, any condition which can result in a circular weight. And the resource allocation state is actually defined by how many uh, allocated resources are available, uh, how many resources have been allocated okay, already and how many resources are still available for use. And also it will compare these available resources with the number of resources demanded by each process. So by comparing all of them, we can avoid deadlock. This uh, method is known as deadlock avoidance. Then we define a concept of safe state. Okay, A process is in safe state, it means that it will not enter into a deadlock. On the other hand, if the process is in unsafe state, then it can lead to the deadlock condition. So we will try our best that we do not let a process go from a safe state into an unsafe state. Now what is the definition of a safe state? By safe state we mean that it is a state in which we consider all those processes which have already uh, got hold of the resources and we can still allow any new process to uh, hold further resources. So if we have a condition in which the existing resources held by the uh, different processes, they do not result in a deadlock, as well as if any new process, it wants some resource, we can allocate that resource to that process, then we are sure that we are in a safe state. But let's say if there is no deadlock in the state, uh, in the system, and a process requests a resource and what we want is to um, if we give the resource to the process it can result in a deadlock then this is not a safe state okay so we consider a number of processes in a state and depending upon whether these processes or any of these processes can get allocated uh, some new set of resources then it will be in a safe state so we say that if, if a system is in safe state, then it means there are no deadlock, that is a deadlock free state. On the other hand, 
if the system is in unsafe state, then we can have a possibility of deadlock. So, how can we avoid deadlock? By ensuring that the system will never enter an unsafe state and it is always in a safe state. Now, this diagram shows two states. One is the safe state, the other one is the unsafe state. And the deadlock, it can occur when the system is in unsafe state. But it is not necessarily, which means that it is possible that the system is in unsafe state and still there is no deadlock. Okay? But for sure when the system is in safe state, there will be no deadlock. Okay? So in order to avoid the system uh, going into the unsafe state, we will use the uh, avoidance algorithm. Now, there are two possibilities. If you remember in the beginning, I told you that a deadlock can occur if there is a single resource in a resource allocation graph and there is a cycle. So, in that case, a deadlock can occur. So, let's consider the case for a single instance of a resource type. If every resource type in the system has single instance, okay, then how can we use a resource allocation graph for deadlock, uh, deadlock avoidance. But in conditions when you have multiple instances of a resource type, we can use another algorithm which is called the banker's algorithm. Okay? But banker's algorithm we are not going to discuss. So we will consider only the first case when we have single instance of a resource type. Okay? And we can use a resource allocation graph to avoid deadlock. So previously in a resource allocation type we have two we had two type of edges one was the request edge and the other was the other one was the uh, allotment or assignment edge okay request edge means the process is requesting for this uh, resource and it is waiting for that resource and an assignment edge means the process is holding that resource now we can change the algorithm by introducing a third type of edge which is known as claim edge. A claim edge is also from a process to a resource. Okay? But the difference between a claim edge and a request edge is that a claim edge denotes that a process may request a resource. It is not requesting now but in future after some time this process may need to request this resource and we use a dashed line to represent a claim edge. So what is the importance of claim edge? Actually it tells you about the future prediction of how a pro of the possibility that a process may actually request a resource in some time. And a claim edge which is a dashed line, it is converted to a request edge when a process requests a resource at some actual time. So before making a request, there will be just the claim edge indicating that there can be a request in the near future. Now the request edge is converted to an assignment edge when the resource is allocated to the process. So it means that in the beginning, before any allocation, before any request, we find is this pro if this process may need a resource. If there is a need, there will be a claim edge. Then at the actual time when the process requests the resource, we will have a request edge. The claim edge will be converted into a request edge. And finally, if the resource is assigned to a process, okay, it can be only used by that process then this will result in a assignment edge. Similarly, uh, when the resource is released by a process, again the assignment edge is converted back to a claim edge. So the important thing in this algorithm is that resources must be claimed a priori in advance in the system. Okay, without a claim the resource request will not be accepted. So let's consider this new resource allocation graph. 
Remember that resource allocation graph avoidance algorithm is only for the type of resources which have only one instance. So here R1 and R2, they both can have only one instance. Can anyone tell me about these different edges? The edge from P1 to R2, the edge from R1 to P1, or the edge from P2 to R1. Anyone? The purpose of a claim edge from P1 to R2 or P2 to R2 is that P1 can access, uh, can request R2 or P2 can request R2 later sometime. They will need R2 in the future. That is the claim edge. The other type of edge is the request edge. Which edge is the request edge here? From P2 to R1 or from R1 to P1? A request can be made a, a, a by a process for a resource. So here we see that actually P2 is requesting for R1. So the edge from P2 to R1 is a request which means P2 wants R1 and the edge from R1 to P1 is actually an allocation edge which means that at this time P1 is holding R1. So we should know about these three edges. Why is this important? Because it will help us in deadlock avoidance. Now. Uh, what will be an unsafe state? Okay, it will be an unsafe state if we convert the claim edge into a request edge. Okay, and you can see that there is a circle if we make this claim edge into a request edge. So it will change from the dashed line to a normal arrow okay and then it will be a cycle and because there is only one instance so it will yes any question any question no okay so it will become a circle circular uh, weight which will result in the deadlock so in order to avoid deadlock we will not ask for the uh, resource when P2 finishes the resource, then the edge from P2 will be converted to a claim and after that P1 can request R2 by converting its claim edge into a request edge. So we explain this by the example that suppose Ti request a resource Ri, then the request can be granted only if converted the request edge to an assignment edge does not result in the formation of a cycle in the resource allocation graph which we see here. So this graph tells us that we should not convert P1 uh, from, R, from P1 to R2 edge into a request edge because it will create a cycle and it will result in a deadlock so we avoid that. Okay? If you have any question, the next topic is about Banker's algorithm, okay? But we don't want, uh, I'm not uh, having ba Banker's algorithm for uh, this time. Now, Banker's algorithm is actually for cases when you have multiple instances of a resource, okay? And similar to the resource allocation graph, we have this uh, a priori information. It is a little bit complex. So I'm uh, not including this in the course this time. Okay? Any question?